So a uh, common problem. Uh, most C++ developers are still working in C++ 11. Uh, but in a perfect world, who wouldn't want to have the latest standard? We just heard C++ 23 is ratified. And um, the fact that some of us are still trapped with 10-year-old tech is uh, a little bit frustrating. I, I personally was in that position, and that's how I felt. But uh, so like today, what most people are doing is they have a code base, and they have a build environment, and they have some validation in QA, and they create an app, a product that they ship to their customer, right? And usually what happens is that build environment has one compiler and you usually use the default c++ standard that was implemented for that compiler uh, so perhaps you're still using gcc7 and you're still running c++ 11 because that's where you're at um, this can limit you in your flexibility so with conan uh, you get the ability to have what we call profiles so you can have your build environment support gcc7 with c++ 11 as well as GCC 12 with C++ 20 and being able to do both of these builds in tandem and put them through the same QA and validation and be able to track your two different apps with the different standards. You're able to test and validate the compatibility and being able to do this side by side. You can do something like other ecosystems have done where you have a current development where developers get to work on the latest and greatest and improve the products, but at the same time, maintain and deliver an LTS support, right? So you can always make sure your customers are being supported, but developers have the freedom to innovate. And I think that's where the sweet spot is. So uh, this is generally sometimes seen as a solved problem, right? So uh, most of us are familiar with release and debug. You usually work in debug and ship and release. So usually these things are already separated and you're probably already thinking I have solutions for those. Or maybe you have to ship something for Windows and Linux and you need to track your binaries for both. So starting into DevOps is knowing what packages need to be built and tracking the existence of those binaries across the software development lifecycle. And uh, with Conan 2.0, we're really trying to enable enterprises to be able to do this. So that's a little bit about Conan. So what's new? Uh, everything. Uh, it's been five years that we've gone without a breaking change. Uh, about 60% of the code base is completely new, 20% is backwards, and the only way that any of this is going to work is there's a compatible syntax between Conan 1.x, so the latest version of that, and 2.0. So if you're already developing and maintaining recipes with Conan 1, uh, you can upgrade and use the latest features of Conan 1 and upgrade to Conan 2.0, and that's where the success of this new release is going to come from is that ability to seamlessly translate. And why did we do this, right? And the whole reason is because we've been listening. So um, Conan has one of the most active channels on the CPP language Slack. Uh, we have about 2,400 members and about 85 of them are posting regularly. So there's very often active conversation and discussion where people are sharing information and knowledge and all of this is turning into feedback. Um, Conan is in Python. It's available on PyPy, and it's one of the most common ways people use to install it. This is just one of the installers. There's an MSI, a Debian package, and more. Um, Conan has about 800,000 downloads a month. And when I took the screenshot, it actually had 825,000, which is just like superb numbers. Um, and it's designated as a critical Python project. So that means it's in the top 1% of the most downloaded Python projects. So the C++ package manager is a top 1% Python package. So you can just see how like, in terms of scale and size, we're still doing really well in that. Uh, the other thing is being open source. Uh, we're on GitHub. Uh, we get a ton of pull requests. Um, the blue bars are the client. So that's the main client you usually do Conan install with. Uh, but we also have Conan Center, as I mentioned. And you can see here that the number of pull requests we get year over year has been growing very well. So this is actually where I got my start in Conan. I was a Conan Center contributor for several years before I even got uh, hired at JFrog. Um, so I am very familiar. So I started in 2019 and uh, I've been watching this growth happen and it's very impressive. So. Um, hopefully next year I can add another bar with uh, 8,000 pull requests. 
Uh, my future self is probably going to cringe having to review that many, but uh, we make it work somehow. And along with that comes support. So there's about 2,000 GitHub issues every year. Uh, we The team does over 100 hours a year of video calls with users, asking them, working with them. Um, and we get direct support all the time. So I mentioned our Slack channel. People reach out to us. Uh, we have emails that come in from people trying to get help and whatnot. So uh, we do a ton of support and we work very closely with a lot of our enterprises. So uh, I have a cute little graph of like the number of artifactory servers. That's one of JFrog's core products um, and it supports Conan. And we can have like over 7,000 production servers that are not behind a firewall that are reporting telemetry, which how many IT people let that happen? Um, and continuing with our enterprises, we have our Conan tribe. So we launched this a few years ago, and I used to actually be a part of this. Um, and we have tribe members from enterprise customers like Bose, TomTom, Continental, and uh, they've been working and giving us feedback on the new features that are coming out in Conan 2.0. So uh, today I'm gonna share with you three lessons, learning to fly, which will be the new graph model, which is super important. Uh, repeating yourself. So if you need to do reproducible builds, the Conan 2.0 lock files are gonna be very interesting for you. And lastly, we have building a dam. And uh, when you're amassing packages, you need to be able to know which ones are compatible. So we're gonna be doing some binary compatibility with Conan 2.0. So our first lesson, learning to fly. Um, we're going to start with just some of the basics so that everybody's on the same page and we're going to i'm just going to share with you a conan recipe so when you want to create a package and you want to share this with your team and your network uh this is where you start it's a conan recipe so uh you can see here we have a cute math example so there's a git repository you can clone math you can go in there and if you do conan create it'll compile this project and uh, generate artifacts and capture that you can share. So uh, you can see here we have a Conan file that's a math class. Uh, its name is math. There's a version. There's a source method. So that's how you either clone, download the source code, a build method, and a package method. And that's that's pretty much all you need to get started. So in Conan 1.x, if you wanted to do transitive dependencies, so uh, you can see here we have our math example. Right, we're going to add an engine on top of that, which requires math uh, 1.0. And then we're going to have an engine, uh, a game that requires the engine. Right. And uh, we're going to be doing this with a CMake example. So um, inside of your engine project, you're going to have CMake, you're going to call find package, and you're going to link to the math math CMake target. Right. And in game, you're going to have find package engine, and you're going to have uh, linking linkage to that engine engine target, right? So if you uh, go into game and you do Conan install and CMake, uh, you have your dependencies. And the thing here is if we change engine from being a shared library to a static library. So uh, the Conan 2.0, proposal is we're going to be adding requirement traits. So this will allow the engine to describe how it uses math. So here you can see we're adding headers equals true and libs equals true. So in our CMake files, we're going to add those properties onto the math target when we generate them for the engine. So um, when you do the, your Conan install, it'll automatically generate the CMake depths files for you. And uh, here you'll have the interface link libraries and the interface include libraries. So this is very similar if you did CMake install yourself. If we change headers to being false, the property, the target of math for engine won't have that property being set. So you can see here it's crossed out in our example to show that. And similarly with libs, if that was false, then the link libraries entry wouldn't be populated. So uh, with Conan 2.0, we're going to be adding this ability to do transitive dependencies. So 
1.x did not have this notion. Everything was added, everything was public, and you had access to everything. So with Conan 2.0, our engine's still gonna require math and our game is still gonna require engine, but engine will, but game will also be gaining that transitive dependency to math. So if you were to write this out very explicitly, what you would get is the engine requires the headers and libs of math and the transitive libs would be false. So we're not going to expose that because our, we're gonna make our engine shared in this case. And our game will require engine, both headers and libraries, but the transitive dependencies that will be built by the Conan graph will have the math requirement set to false for both headers and libraries. So those targets won't be populated when you do Conan install for your game project. So doing all of that explicitly is quite cumbersome and painful. So we're also introducing the notion of package types. So you can have a package type for a static library, or you can add that as an option to your recipe. So it could be shared, true or false. Uh, the other one is going to be shared, which you can also do the same um, option trick to get that to work. Uh, and lastly, there's going to be application. So you can uh, explicitly say this is going to only generate an executable and there's no linkage to headers or libraries. So demo time. Yes, code is over here. Uh, actually, let's do the desktop. So I have uh, some cute little demos that I'll be sharing with you. So we've been talking about our math library, we have our engine library, and we have our game library. And uh, we are going to be building and working with these. So I have a cheat sheet called build.py, which I can use to uh, remind myself of all the commands. And uh, we are going to go over this. So um, if I do Conan, search and I specify everything, I should have some pre-compiled packages. Oh, I have a lot of packages. Hmm. Don't use your work system to do demos. So uh, as you can see, there's already a lot of packages in Conan Center that actually work with Conan 2.0. So that's a freebie. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our game directory and we're going to install our CMake files and we're going to do our engine is shared. So if I CD into game, I'm a game developer and I want to build my project and I want to have a shared engine. All right. So what Conan is going to do is it's going to uh, use my settings. So I'm on a Mac, so it's using Apple Clang um, and I'm going to be running with 14. And it's going to look up the requirements so it knows it's using my Conan file for game. Uh, and my requirement ranges. So I'm going to be using uh, engine, anything between one and two, and math, anything between one and two. Uh, and then it's looking in my cache to see if I ha already have these artifacts pre-compiled. And I do. So we have our engine, which here is going to be uh, found in the cache. And then we have math. And now math, you'll notice here, is skipped. So because engine is shared, those libraries and those headers aren't being required, and it's showing you that here in the graph. So if I go into our game, and I look into our build folder, and I do a find in folder, and I type in math, Oops, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? There we go, okay. I, I practiced, so we're good. And then if I go back to our search, find in files, math, there we go. So because I had practiced this and I had already had the config files, we saw the references. So surprise what's going to happen next. Uh, but now you can see 
these no, there's no reference to math inside of our uh, game build folder, which is perfect, right? So because it's skipped, it's not populating any of that information, and you won't get mixed up in using those accidentally. Now, if we run a Conan install again, but this time without the shared option, we'll notice here that in our requirements, our math is now being found and populated from the cache. So it's no longer being skipped. We go here and I do a search. You'll see there's tons of references to this. And here is the properties that are gonna be loaded and set uh, that Conan is generating. And you can see here that it's only adding the libraries. So because we're gonna be using a static engine, we're going to need the library files of math as well so that we can link together our game. But what's fun to note here is that the include directories are empty. So the default behavior in Conan 2.0 for these package traits is to not expose the headers. So generally, you want your dependencies to be well encapsulated. You shouldn't be exposing those dependencies. So the header files aren't going to be made available by default. So if you wanted to add these, you can go into the Conan file and you could say headers equals true or transit of headers equals true, and that'll propagate them through. Uh, and this will prevent developers from making more mistakes. So if you're working on a larger code base and you have six or seven different modules and you accidentally include header files for one project that you are not explicitly requiring, uh, and then for some reason, some other dependency that was pulling that in changes and that's missing and you have compilation errors and you're like, why doesn't it work on my system? Um, and the, your co code is failing in your pull request. And this will prevent you from making those mistakes and having to track down those uh, issues. So, uh, dependency graph in Conan 2.0, correct linkage requirements. So you'll be able to know when those libraries are being pulled in. Correct header visibility, uh, possible to do hidden and private dependencies. So if you have an internal private implementation that you don't want your customers to share and you're using Conan package to ship it, you can actually do that now finally. And there is a lot more to this. Uh, Diego, who is the co-founder of Conan, did an amazing talk at ACCU last year about exactly this. And it's a full one hour in-depth review of this. So I'm giving you a teaser of this. There is a lot more nuance and detail to this. So if you wanna learn more, I highly recommend this talk. Um, this works between build systems as well. So if you want to write your dependency graph between CMake and Auto Tools or CMake and Maison to support this, you can do that as well with this as well. Um, and this is a compatibility syntax for requires with 1.x. So you can write this in Conan 1.x. It won't have an effect, but it'll allow you to have one recipe that works in both Conan 1 and Conan 2. So you can develop that new feature into your product. So our second lesson is going to be repeating ourselves. And this is one of those topics that uh, is very near and dear to me because as an enterprise user, I ran into this head on in Conan 1. So um, we're gonna do the reproducible build problem and we have our math library, right? So it takes a version range. So it'll pick any new version. Uh, this is really easy and flexible as a developer because when you're working, you just wanna upgrade and make a new version of math and try it out and see if it works on your system. Um, so here we have our same graph and we're going to use our version ranges requirements. And when we do a Conan install, uh, it'll work, right? So if I go along or someone else comes and they publish a math 1.1 and we are using these version requirements, when we do an install on game, uh, it's going to pull in that new version of math, which is wrong. So as a game developer, I'm working on game, I'm trying to modify the game code. And now all of a sudden my build broke because that pesky team math developer published a new library and it doesn't work with my code anymore. Right, so the solution to this is lock files. So 
if you do a conan install and you do lock file out and you do game.lock um in that lock file you'll have math 10 and engine 10 if someone publishes a new math version and you do an install and you specify the lock file for your game it'll pull in 1.0 for math so you won't be impacted by the other team development and the new versions of other projects that are happening alongside. So this is an extremely highly used, important feature. Um, over the last two and a half years, 10% of issues were related to this. They mentioned lock files, they needed lock files, lock files didn't work for them. So it's one of those things that has been creeping up that people have been asking us for. And they usually have a decision tree like this, right? So uh, they bump a requirement depth to some new version of the consumer. They use version ranges or revisions, and they move forward aggressively. Uh, but they also need to have reproducibility in their build system when they submit builds to be checked into master. And they need lock files for this. So uh, our estimate is about 25 to 40% are using lock files in 1.x. And this case I just shared does not work with those lock files. So, um, but the demand is probably about 75%, at least of like enterprise C++ developers are need this feature and have this requirement that's not being met for them. So um, if we wanna unleash lock files, let's say we make a new version of our engine and we want to test that, right? As a game developer, what lock file do we specify here? Right, so uh, enterprise scale can be high, right? So it's very typical that we'll hear customers that are using two to 300 deep project graphs and they'll have different teams working on different modules, publishing packages all at the same time. All right, so this domain is really challenging. Uh, continue, continue integration at scale is absolutely critical for them. And this is thinking beyond package and dependency management. So uh, similarly to how programming over time is software engineering, dependency and package management over time is DevOps. That's what this key buzzword is. It's being able to track those different packages over time, picking and choosing when you come in and when you use them. So in 2.0, the huge change here that's gonna happen is in 1.x, the lock files were literally the entire graph. So it literally took a snapshot of the Conan graph and you were fixed to that. So if you needed to change anything, you would need to, your lock file wouldn't work for you. If you had new dependencies, uh, if you wanted to change a version of a dependency that was transitive, you couldn't do that either. In 2.0, this is going to just be a list of versions. And this greatly simplifies almost everything. So, um, being able to just have a list of versions that picks the right one, it's absolutely game-changing here. So I will demonstrate this for you. This again. So we have our, our same three projects. Our game here has our cone file recipe. Uh, and it has this requirement on engine, which is a version range, which you saw on the slides. So we are going to install ourselves as if we're a game developer. So we're working on game. We want to install and get set up on our system. We're going to work and we're going to have a, a game.lock. If I output game.lock, this font's a little small. Can I make it bigger for you guys? There you go. Um, and you can see here in our version requirements, we have math 1.1 and we have engine 1.0. So, so both are using the same base version. Now, our pesky math team friends, they're friends, but you know, we, we kind of only get along. Uh, we all have that that those those rivalries in our teams. Um, they go and they had and they publish a new math version. 
So it compiled, it's built, it's available, and uh, we want to submit a pull request for game. Right, so we go and we update our dependencies in the CI and it runs. And you'll notice here, it pulled in 1.0. So our version range says we can use anything, but because we are using our commands and we're specifying as an input our lock file for game.lock, it knows to pick from that list of versions that we're, we have. So this works by default if you don't specify anything. So for the purpose of this example, I'm explicitly outputting a lock file and inputting a lock file, but by default, Conan 2.0 will work with the Conan.lock file. So you'll get the same thing, even if you don't specify this. Now, let's say we want to be an engine developer and we want to take our game lock file and we want to work on a new version of engine, right? So we're going to take our game lock file and we're going to create a new version so now if i scroll up you'll see here the conan graph knows that it needs to build our new version of engine so 1.1 1 .1 it's going to build but math is still locked to the old version because we're using that game file and, th and this is huge you couldn't do this in conan 1.x so because conan 1.x was the whole graph this dependency was this dependency here was missing and the conan graph would just fail and you couldn't do this so now if i print out the new engine graph oh, not car you can now see in our lock file we actually have both versions of engines that we can pick from which is fantastic. You couldn't like, I, this sounds so small, but it's it's one of the things that's gonna make a world of difference. So if we go back to our game and we want to update this, we can use this new engine lock file and we can build a new version of our game and we can do that using our new version of engine that we just made for ourselves along with that old version of math that we do not want to use and involve and impact our graph. So I didn't know that the math team did a new version. They got published. It was shipped. They did a great job. Uh, but I, as a developer, didn't want to be impacted by those because that would introduce new variants to my build and my CI and my tests could fail. And that would just be absolute insanity. If everybody in the company was making a new version and everybody was updating right away, uh, it would be really difficult to work like that. And these new lock files really give us that chance. So. You can have one lock file for all configurations. They're easily mutable. They're much easier to understand. Um, they fully restrict, there's fully restricted modes and partial modes. Uh, you can actually merge these together. And there are commands to actually modify the lock files, which are usable. Um, and it's possible to do multi-projects uh, with this these new lock files. So if one project has overlap with another product and you want to make sure they're using the same dependencies in between, you can do that with lock files for the first time. Uh, the code base is about 10 times shorter for lock files. Uh, this change of going from a list of versions to pick from, from the actual whole graph to match, uh, has been huge. And this is going to be a game changer for doing CI at scale. Um, especially for those enterprise use cases where you don't need downstream changes impacting you, it's going to be a, a, a absolute time saver. I saw there was a question in the chat. Was just about to ask about why not support lock files by default. Ah, perfect. I'm glad I touched on that for you. Uh, so our third lesson for us is going to be building a dam. Now, uh, this is another one that I am absolutely fond of. Uh, if you go digging in the Conan repository for issues by uh, Prince-ChrisMC, that's me, uh, you're going to find some very, very old ones with me and Diego going back and forth about the business use case for this. So um, I stole this as a quick summary of one of those issues, uh, discussion of glibc support in Conan. Um, and we have an extremely opinionated ecosystem. So they 
I want to track compatibility with different systems. So great. Well, what's important to you? What do you need to do that? First person chimes in. Uh, we make the distinction based on C runtimes, you know, glibc, muzzlelibc, uh, and that's all we really care about. Person two, not really. We care about the different Linux distributions, right? So I only care if it works on Ubuntu, Alpine, Red Hat, CentOS. Um, I don't really care about the libc implementation under the hood as long as it works on the distro. And the third person says, but it's easy. Why don't you just put the exact version of the libc version in the settings, right? That's all it takes. And uh, yeah, it's easy. Uh, they'll probably never be compatible. So different versions in the settings means that different package IDs. And that means you'll need to rebuild your package every single time, which sounds like a lot of painful work. And then the first person times in, what about Windows? Right, I, I got to do Windows. I have different runtimes depending on the IDE version that I have installed on the system. And uh, I need to be able to track that as well. So the point here is there's not really one answer that fits everybody's needs. So if you want to do compatibility, you probably have a specific use case that's tailored to you. Um, and these are just some of the four big ones that we see going around quite often. So um, what exactly is binary compatibility? What exactly are we talking about? So, um, and the important thing here is depending on your perspective and depending on what your experiences are, you're probably going to have a different interpretation, right? So for... Conan and the Conan perspective, um, if I have a requirement between engine and math, uh, are the binaries compatible between engine and math? Are those two packages able to work for my profile? Will they link together? So uh, each binary package in Conan has a unique ID. So here in math, we have 6AF. Uh, and different configurations match exactly the same settings, but they must be compatible. So if you have a recipe which has um, a package that's header only, all of the packages, no matter the configuration, will always have the same package ID. And you can do things like uh, this package is not dependent on compiler version. And you can delete that. And no matter the compiler version, you'll always get the same package ID. So um, here you can see I stole the example from FMT. Uh, this is the, the binary model that you would expose in your recipe. So you have settings. This one takes operating system, architecture, compiler, and build type. Uh, so intuitively, if you change between debug and release, the binaries are different, and they don't necessarily work together. And Conan calculates all of this in the package ID and models it. But you can also have options. So you can do header only, shared, um, fpic, position independent code if you need it. Uh, and this FMT project has two other options that can impact this as well. All right. So in Conan 1.x, the full binary model looks like this. So uh, you have options, settings, and your requirements. And these requirements are used to calculate these unique package IDs. So uh, you can see in the top one, we have Zlib and Boost, and that has one. And then if we use a different version of Zlib and Boost, we get a different package ID. So compatibility in Conan means different package IDs are interchangeable and they'll still result in the same final binary. So if I have two different math binaries that are compatible, I should be able to produce an engine binary that is the exact same thing. So different inputs, same outputs. So the default package ID mode uh, in Conan 1.x was semantic versioning. Uh, at CppCon, in Diego's talk, uh, he used the analogy of cats and dogs. Um, I have a dog. He's sleeping on the sofa back there. I can hear him snoring away. Hopefully you don't. Um, and I think dogs are a good default. So semantic versioning must be the right answer. Um, so here, if we have math uh, 1.0 and we have math 1.3, uh, in Conan 1.x, what this would do is it would do the semantic versioning where uh, the major versions are always compatible. And you can see here, Kona represents that as doing 1.y.z. So this is what the semantic versioning default package mode in Conan 1.x was doing under the hood. This meant that these two graphs resulted in the same ID for the engine, which in most cases probably wasn't right. So, if you have a shared library linking to a static library, 
So we have here our uh, math2.cpp and our engine CPP. That math function for add produces a unique symbol in the library files. And when we go and compile our engine as a DLL, those symbols are inlined into the DLL. So the depending on your options and the binaries and packages you're trying to put together, uh, in this case, we're going from a static math library to a shared engine. Uh, if you change math, those versions should have a different binary in the DLL. So 1.0 will have a different, should have a different package ID because those symbols are being inlined. All right. So in Conan 2.0, we're going to be introducing new package modes, and these are going to be dynamic based on that application type that I mentioned earlier. So um, here you can see we have our math uh, 3.2 revision. So revisions in Conan uh, 2.0 are our default. So uh, not in this talk, but uh, revisions are going to be on by default. Um, and that's going to be included in the uh, non-embedded mode. So this is going to be the minor. So here um, you can see our requirements is now going to be 1.3.0. So the, the default settings and the default behavior is that the patch version is really going to be bug fixes that don't change the ABI or linkage. So they should not be impacting uh, the final package ID. Um, the other new mode that we're going to be doing is called embedded, and this is going to be the full mode. So this is going to use the full syntax. So it's going to do math, the version, the revision. So revisions in Conan are the uh, how you compile the binary. So depending how you compile, you can actually get different results. So this is important and it's something that's captured, but there's also going to be the package ID. So uh, for the embedded mode, if you're doing a app that requires a static, you get the full embedded mode. Uh, if you have a static library using a header only library, uh, you'll also get this embedded full mode. So this will much better uh, give you a representation of your graph so you know what needs to be rebuilt. Uh, and this is going to be an absolute game changer for a lot of people. If you want to learn more about this, I'm going over it very briefly. Um, Diego's talk at CPCon went over the new package ID modes and how they work much better than I will ever give you. Um, so these are configurable. Uh, defaults are great, but at the end of the day, everybody has their own requirements and you can actually change these. So uh, the default for none, non-embedded, embedded, Python and build requirements uh, change. So uh, perhaps for you, when you're adding build requirements, you actually care about how those impact your binary. So by default, Conan says it's done, but you can very easily change this to a uh, full mode or minor mode or major mode, whichever one suits your needs the best. Um, and in order to do all of this, we're going to be introducing a compatibility plugin. So uh, in your Conan home directory, there is going to be a built-in default one, which is going to be for the CPP STD. So uh, you're going to have an extensions, plugin, compatibility, and you can easily install and configure and manage these just by doing Conan config install and passing the path in. So all this file needs to have is one method called compatibility, and it takes a Conan file. And I'm going to demo this one for you. First, we are going to flush my cache. Uh, and then I will delete the build folder because that pesky thing likes to bugger me up in my demos. And we don't have anything for engine. So we do compatibility. So I will do this. So I am running with some of the default settings. And uh, I touched on this earlier, but for the CPU, for the compatibility one, you can notice here, the CPP STD is using GNU 98. Uh, by default, Apple Clang compilers use the lowest one possible. Uh, and I believe in a recent version, they're actually changing this to use a newer one. So 
by default, uh, Conan detected my settings and it's assuming that I'm running with this. So uh, let's let's build everything, right? So we're going to build our map library. We're going to go back to using uh, 1.0 for our versions. And it compiles nicely. And we're going to do our engine. So um, both of these are being built with our C++ uh, STD98. So it's using a very old standard. But I'm, a, I'm one of those young folks, one of those interns that got hired. Uh, true story. I was the guy who tried to compile things with the wrong standard. Um, and I want to compile the game, so that top-level project, and I want to do it with a newer standard. I want to use C++14. All right, and this better work because why in the heck wouldn't it? Same compiler, same environment, same system, um, and it does nowadays. So if we go look at what Conan is doing, um, it's finding the settings. And you can see here in my settings, it's now doing CPP SD 14. So it's good. Took the command line, easy peasies. Uh, we have our same graph on our same requirements. Nothing's changed there, but this is new. Computing necessary packages. So you can hear for math, it's checking 11 compatible configurations. So it took the math library, it ran it through the compatibility plugin that I have, and I'll show you that in a moment. And it is just, and it calculated all these different values are possible. And it went through the list and it found one. So main binary package, uh, 262, uh, using compatible package, uh, OCB. So this is the package ID for the uh, CPP 14 one that it wanted, but it was missing. And it found a compatible one with uh, our GNU 98, which is perfect because that's what we were previously using. And it does the same thing again for engine. And you can see here, these binaries are coming from the cache. Despite not having the exact same settings, this is a configuration that works. So that's what it ran with. Um, and in our CMake scripts, you can see here our Conan toolchain is saying our standard is C14, where previously it would have said something different. And this compiles and this works well. And this runs and it prints our versions of everything, which is fantastic. And ta da. So um, if I go to our Conan 2 home, extensions, compatibility, and then compatibility PY, we have our, for the defaults, Conan organizes them so that we can add more in the future. So this is the default entry point, which is our default uh, compatibility function here. But we're also gonna import our CPP STD, and this is going to calculate those. So uh, for our Conan files, we're gonna get our, compiler settings, our version, if they're the same. And then we're going to load the supported CPBSDs for our compiler version. And for each one of those, we're going to add that to a list and we're going to return that as a list of values for the settings. So this is how we generate all the compatible configurations. And this is why Conan knows that there are 11 compatible configurations, it's because that's what our script spat out to it. So for this compiler and this platform, I have 11 CPP SDs that are compatible, and this is going to be the default. So if you want to write your own compatibility plugin, you can easily install those yourselves. Conclusion. Uh, some of the new features, uh, graph, plugin extensions, deployers, binary compatibility, um, but there's a, a lot more, right? So we got multi-revision cache, new package IDs, lock files, which I shared with you, uh, configurations and environments, package immutability. Um, there is a very long list. And I updated my slides while I, we were watching. Um, pip install Conan 2.0. It'll work. It's out. It's finally, today's the big day. Woohoo! Uh, it's been a long, long process. Um, so thank you very much.